a little unusual in the fact that I had just as many non-beauty favorites as beauty favorites, and I'm not gonna put them all into one mega long 30 minute video. Instead, I think maybe later in March, I'll do an update about my 2015 goals and let you guys know how I'm doing. I'm doing a lot better about not rushing around like a maniac in the morning and packing better lunches. So I thought I could share some of the products and books that have been helping me, but today's video is going to be all about beauty favorites. I have some skincare, makeup, and a couple hair care. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off with skincare favorites. My first is from a brand called Skin Iceland. These are the Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gel. I don't know if you guys Sometimes when I get really sleepy, it's almost like the skin underneath my eyes feels heavy. I don't know if that makes any sense or if you guys have experienced that at all. My eye, my under eye area is an issue. It has just been an issue for quite a while. And so a couple, maybe like a month or two ago, someone regrammed a picture of the model Molly Sims on Instagram. And she had these eye packs on. And I just remember tucking that away in the back of my mind, thinking that might be nice. I should look those up online one day. And then probably a couple weeks went by and I was at Ulta one night, just wasting time going up and down the eye and I saw on an end cap that they had a travel pack of these and in this travel pack you get four pairs of eye gel so I bought it and I used a pack that very night and these are just and you just feel instant coolness and it just feels amazing. And I think if you watched my date night get ready with me video, I called these a treat for tired eyes and that's exactly what I think they do. They have ingredients like jojoba oil, olive oil, shea butter. So they're just very nourishing and they have a really unique texture and you only have to leave them on for about 10 minutes to get the full effect. So these are something I would do once a week on that one night where I'm doing a mask and just trying to relax, I would put these on and then I might do it, you know, maybe midway through the week if you know, it's just long, spending a long time at work, you're just feeling a little bit extra tired. These are just a really nice pick me up. Keeping with products that are supposed to help with my dry under eyes, First Aid Beauty sent me their Eye Duty Triple Remedy Overnight Balm, and it comes in a little plastic pot, and I use a little wooden spatula just to get out a tiny bit of product. You don't need a lot of this at all, and it has a really nice, it's fluffy but still thick, which I think is a nice texture, and I put this on underneath my eyes, and I still have my fine lines. It didn't make those disappear, but it does make the skin around my eye almost feel a little bit more plump and cushiony, which I really like, and you can put this product on your lid as well, which I appreciate because my, just like my under eyes, my lids can get dry. And especially on days like today where I'm doing an all matte lid, if your eyelids are dry, it can just look really uneven and not very smooth. So I love a product that I can put on my lid, just a tiny, but you don't need a lot. And it just helps to smooth that. So then matte shadows go on looking more smooth and blend out a lot easier. I opened up the blinds just a little bit more to help with the brightness. It is so dreary outside. It's just completely gray. It's kind of flurring a little bit, so hopefully that will help with the brightness. But my last skincare product is the Paula's Choice Resist Moisture Renewal Oil Booster. And I used up a bottle of this at the beginning of the month and I told myself, don't repurchase right away. You have tons of facial oils, use some others, but I found myself missing this. So I did place an order and I got it back and I'm so happy to be using it again. It is such a great addition into my skincare routine. In the morning, I mix it a little bit with my vitamin C serum for some extra brightness. And then in the evening, I mix a few drops of this into just one pump of my 1% retinol treatment. And the retinol is to really help kickstart anti-aging. And this helps the retinol just not be too harsh on my skin and add some moisture back in. So if you haven't tried this yet, I even bought a bottle of this for my mom as part of her birthday present and she's saying this is really helping with her dehydrated skin this time of year. I don't know if you can tell but I am battling a cold but this morning I diffused my on guard so I'm feeling good and then Karen introduced me to Umka which I've been taking and I think it must be working because I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. But moving into makeup my friend Sarah maybe last month or January she recommended um, a kissable butter from Almay and I just never get excited about Almay makeup. Makeup. That's just one of the drugstore, like when I'm walking through, I pass right by it. So I, you know, I remembered her saying something about it, but it wasn't something I ran out and bought that day. It was actually a couple weeks later and I had a particularly long dentist appointment. I spent more of my month at the dentist than I did anywhere else. And I have one more appointment on Thursday and I cannot wait to be done with that place for a while. So it was after a long dentist appointment, I went into Walgreens for something and I just decided to buy one because kind of having a bad day. And sometimes when I have a bad day, I buy a lipstick to make myself feel better. So I looked at, they didn't have a ton of colors, but I ended up choosing the light 
medium, nude light medium, and I have never used so much of one lip product in a month. I'll try to do a close up so you can see just how much I've gone through, but I love this color. And it has a surprising amount of color payoff for something that's supposed to be, you know, a lip butter that you think of more moisturizing, less pigment to it. But it's beautiful on its own, but I love it paired with the Jordana Easy Liner for lips in the shade Tawny. This is what I have on today. I lined my lips, filled them in, and then put some of the nude light medium kissable butter on top. So this has been by far my favorite lip combination and I'm still loving it. And it's something that just has been kind of living in my purse. My next makeup favorite is so good. It's a liner from Tarte. And I think it's either called Tartis or Tartiste. It is their clay paint liner. And it comes in a squeeze tube and it has a little well right up at the top that you squeeze the product into. And the reason I like this so much, one, is that when I use a gel or cream liner, I'll take my brush, dip it into the pot, and then I take the product and kind of roll it on the back of my hand, making sure that I get the product really nicely onto the brush. So by the time I'm done doing my makeup, I have to go find a makeup remover and wipe off the back of my hand. But with this product, I can do all of that right into the little well. So I try to squeeze up just a tiny bit of product, take the brush that comes with it and just roll it into that so I get a nice even application. And the formula of this product is really nice. It's not as thick as a traditional cream or gel liner, but it's not as thin as a liquid liner. It's somewhere in the middle and I really like how fluid, it makes it so easy to draw the line. And also it dries really matte, just really black, really matte. And that's how I like my liner to look. So this product was, I just wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. And I think the brush that comes with it is also really nice. Tarte liner brushes are some of my favorite to use, especially for wing liner. My only small issue with this is that one of my eyes, I think it's this one, is a little bit more more hooded than the other. So some days I do get a little bit of transfer onto my upper lid, but that's a small thing. And so I still really like this and I hope it does well. So maybe if it does well, they'll come out with some other colors because I would really like it in brown too. For nails this month, I bounce between really subtle pale nails and a bright red. And for the bright red, I used Julep's January, which is a gorgeous cream polish. There's just something when it is so gray and dreary outside to have the contrast of kind of really glossy red nails. I love the look of that. I did have one product that did not work out for me in the month of February. It was back when Ulta was doing their 20% offset and I went in to stock up on my Kendra Volume 25 spray, which is the best hairspray, and Kendra is one of my favorite hair care lines. So I was back in the bag buying the hairsprays, and I noticed, I think this is a newer product, it's called the Dry Thickening Spray, Density Building Spray. And it sounded exactly like my Bumble and Bumble Dry Spun Thickening Spray that I like so much. However, with the Kendra, you get more than double the amount of product for less money. So I was so excited about this and bought it, took it home, and I just hate to say it, but I don't think it does much at all. I don't get any of that airy texture or pieciness that I get with the Bumble and Bumble. So even though it's a better value, I don't think I'll be repurchasing this. I'm gonna go back to the Bumble and Bumble. I do have one hair care favorite. It's a tool that I learned about from following Kristen S on Instagram. And she's a famous hairstylist. She cuts Lauren Conrad's hair and Aria from Pretty Little Liars, Lucy Hale. So she's cut their hair kind of short and she always does these barely there waves that I love. She posts a blog post where she lists all the products, tools, techniques that she uses to get that look. And after after reading that, I went out and bought the exact curling iron that she uses, and this is it. It's from Hot Tools. I can't remember all the specifics about it, like the size, so I will link that down below, but it is unlike any Hot Tools curling iron I've owned before because it doesn't have a spring clamp. It's one that you have to open and close manually, and coming from a person who cannot use chopsticks to save their life, this was so difficult to get used to, and I'm still not used to it, and it's kind of funny even just watching myself try to curl my hair just to get used to opening and closing it and try to figure out the best way to hold it. But I I love the look that you get from this, just this barely there wave. And then in the blog post, she talks about how she pulls down on it and that's how you get these straight ends. And I love that look. And this hairstyle takes no time at all to do. So I am trying to take back some of my morning and not waste so much time. So having a really quick go-to hairstyle that I like, that doesn't take a lot of time, I'm loving. So I will link both the information about this curling iron and I'll try to find that blog post in case you're interested in recreating this look yourself because she does go into a lot of detail. I feel like I I have talked myself hoarse, so that is going to be it for me today. But I would love to read what some of your February favorites are or if there's a product that you would recommend to me. I still have some reviews that are coming your way. I didn't talk about foundations in this video, even though I'm really liking both the new NARS and the new L'Oreal Matte Foundation. I am so glad I didn't do immediate reviews because the longer I've used both of them, my thoughts have changed. Not bad, I still really like them, but I just have some pros and cons and you know, 
better ways that I have found to apply them. So those reviews will be coming up, but that is all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.